What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. In this video, I'm going to be doing a scene and compositing breakdown of the first shot in our Spiderfy add-on for Blender trailer. I will cover the general 3D setup inside of Blender with the Boyd's particle systems, as well as show some simple yet very useful compositing techniques in compositing the various layers inside of After Effects. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender. This is our general scene setup here. On the right side of our view here, we have our camera view with a nice photo for our background to line up our locus fields too and then on the right side we just have our general blender 3d view and even though this shot was one of my favorites to create it was actually a super simple 3d setup it's comprised of two locust void particle systems here um, i've added one for the background going to its goal and near the center of our scene here which is off to the left in our camera view and then i've added another locust particle system here going to its goal here closer to the camera so this is our general scene setup i didn't 3d track the shot inside of blender all of the tracking for the shot was just a simple mocha 2d track inside of after effects where i just uh, composited the renders of both the background locust here from our first particle system as well as our foreground locust here and i've just composited those 2d elements inside of after effects and as you can see here two different bug systems in our collection and two different bug system goals for each locust system and again we've just added those locust fields through our spotify add-on i recently made a tutorial on how you can add these locusts so i'm not going to be covering that specifically but again just the general scene overview but uh, yeah, so I'll just disable our bug system in the foreground. And now as you can see here, if we play through it, we just have our locusts flying to their goal. And that was essentially what we used to create our background element. I've rendered out each of these bug systems for both the foreground and the background as separate elements so that I could have a little bit more control in the compositing process inside of After Effects. I think that was one of the keys to creating the scene. If we rendered out both the foreground and the background elements at the same time, I don't think it would have been nearly as easy to composite the elements together because uh, we would be adjusting a lot of different perspectives. But uh, yeah, this is our general scene setup. Um, one of the keys to getting this shot to look really good was the lighting. As I mentioned before, lighting is super important when you're combining your CG with live action. So as you can see here from our live action screenshot from the footage we plan on adding these locusts to, we can zoom into the uh, woman's face here and see that there's sun kind of uh, almost three quarter backlighting her face here. This gives us a really good idea on what we should recreate lighting wise to make sure our locusts match that same feel. So what I've done here is uh, since I know from our live action footage that the sun is almost at a three quarter backlight, I've added just a basic sun to our scene here, lighting up our locusts. And uh, then I've also added under our world settings an HDRI that kind of matches the general feel of the live action shot. And it's just going to help create that 360 degree lighting in addition to our sun that we've added manually here. And uh, also for the sun, as you can see here in our live action photo, the sun is a little bit warmer than the rest of the shot so uh, under the lighting tab as you can see here I've changed the color to be a bit warmer to match that as well um, and because I did this inside a blender I didn't have to do quite as much color correction in the compositing process to blend the locust into the scene in addition to the Sun and the HDRI I've also as usual added a uh, ground plane to our scene and one of the things that I often looked over when I was first getting started in visual effects was at least trying to recreate the environment around around the 3D elements that you're going to render. So if you don't at least try to recreate your environment around the CG object you're going to render, it's not gonna look very realistic. So generally what I always try to do is at least add an HDRI, some lights to match the lighting to the live action shot. And then I'm always adding a ground plane that at least has the general color of our ground in the live action shot. So what I've done here, even though I'm not actually rendering out this plane, I've just created it so that the locusts have a little bit better environment lighting um, so as you can see here if I go to the uh, materials properties of our ground plane here the base color is just kind of the color of this ground here in the foreground which is going to make sure that those locusts don't have a lot of light that's uh, hitting them from below uh, which is going to make that lighting a lot more realistic and before I go and break down the compositing of the various passes uh, I just want to go to rendered view really quick here and as you can see here if we zoom in to a locust we can see that the light from the sun that we've added to the scene is creating that same quality on the locusts 
as is on her face. So that is a key to compositing all your elements together. I know it seems uh, really basic, but if you don't get that lighting right, it's really hard to you know color correct and use a bunch of different compositing techniques to match your CG to your live action. So just keep that in mind. That was one of the keys to making this shot look as good as it does. So uh, anyways, that was our process inside of Blender. I rendered out those two different uh, bug systems on their own separate passes. And now let's get into After Effects and go through how I composited them. All right, guys, so here we are inside of After Effects. This is our final composite. As you can see, lots of locusts here in the background and some out of focus here in the foreground. So let's get into the different layers that I've added here. The first thing I did for this shot, as I mentioned before, inside of After Effects, I tracked the general movement of the camera and put that movement onto these null objects here. And then all of the locust passes that I've exported from Blender, I parented to those null objects. And uh, that's just gonna make sure that the locusts, of course, move as our camera is moving through this scene here. So as you can see here, if I play through the clip, we can see that the locusts are nicely integrated into the scene and moving around with the footage as if they are actually there. So tracking the shot was the first thing that I did after importing our live action footage. I'll turn off some of these layers here so we can go through this step by step. So the first uh, layer that I added was a plate of the render of our background locusts. And as you can see here, I've actually scaled it down and put it off into the background here so that we have a little bit more depth. So I've actually duplicated the background locust render as well as the locust foreground render and offset some of their timing so that I can actually just populate the shot with a bunch of different versions of the same element. And you can't always get away with this, but if you offset the timing enough and, uh, you know, place them enough in the distance and rescale them and kind of adjust them a little bit, you can get away with reusing the same element. So I've just taken that first background locust render and put it off here in the background for this first step here. And under our effects tab, you can see that I've added a very basic camera lens blur with a blur radius of 0.5 and that's just because the camera is focused on this woman's face here so we want to make sure that these uh, locusts that are off in the distance have a little bit of blur on them like the mountain in the background here so again just trying to match the CG locusts to the live action footage but uh, that was essentially it for the effects that we've added to that layer for this next layer that I've added it's just the same background locust render I've just moved it off to the left of the camera and then I've also created a map mask here so that the point where they enter the scene is feathered a little bit and the shot is a little bit more seamless. So again, with the two layers that we've added now, I just have two different plates of the background locust render and I've just added one here in the distance and then one here a little bit closer, but still off of the distance compared to the other locusts in our shot. And again, I've added some camera lens blur to this element as well. The third layer that I added is again a render of our background locust. This is just to populate further uh, right in our scene. As you can see, over here our camera pans throughout the shot so I needed to actually populate some of this area as well so that's what I've done here just uh, if we go further in our shot you can see that I've added the locusts here in the background and then we lose them as the camera moves since we've tracked the locusts they uh, just kind of leave our frame here but uh, that's what this next pass is again added some camera lens blur to that shot as well above this locust background layer again I have the same locust background pass and this is our main locust pass here as you can see I didn't scale it down and put it into the deep background but uh, kept it more at its original scale and uh, you know now it's looking like what we would get right out of blender since I didn't scale it or adjust it very much in our composite and again using that camera lens blur to blend everything together so all four of these elements here are just that original background locus pass that I've duplicated and offset the timing of and then kind of rescaled and placed in different areas of the scene super simple as you can see if I uh, show it by itself you can't really see uh, that I've duplicated a lot of assets offsetting the timing works wonders and this shows that you can get away with using the same element multiple times so that you can save time in your rendering process so uh, these were our background locust elements here after adding our background locust elements to the scene I've duplicated our footage and rotoscoped out our woman here and as you can see here from the mask it's a super rough roto but if we zoom in here you can see that some of 
of our background locusts are actually above our woman here in the foreground. So for the sake of compositing everything together, we want to make sure that she's rotoscoped out. So that's what this mask is for. And for the mask, I feathered it quite a bit so that whenever they fly behind her, they kind of fade off. And once we add the foreground locust, you're not really going to notice that there's a little feathering on the mask around the woman here. So that's what this layer is. Just a little bit of rotoscoping there for the foreground. And now for these last two elements, I've used the foreground locust pass that we've exported from Blender. As you can see here, when we enable it, it's just some locust here coming up from the river and uh, I'll show it by itself here. Super basic render. I've again added some camera lens blur. Uh, not much difference here since they're closer to the camera and again not on the same focal plane as the woman in our scene. We want to make sure that there's a little bit of blur to match the live action footage. As you can see here some of the grass in the foreground is not super sharp even when we have it at full resolution so we want to try to match those locusts to the shot. So after adding the first element of our foreground locust I've duplicated our foreground locust once and as you can see here if we look in the foreground there's some locust here very close to the camera I've scaled up the uh, locust quite a bit to get them flying right by the camera and if we uh, enable it by itself we can play through it you can see that just a uh, super blurry locust flying right by the camera and I've blurred this element quite a bit using the camera lens blur I've used a blur radius of two because they're so close to the camera that that shallow depth of field actually works for the shot and as you can see here if I disable the camera lens blur you can see that the element isn't actually very detailed because we've scaled it up so much we're getting some pixelation here but once you add that camera lens blur to it you can get away with having that element not have a lot of detail and it actually gives a shot a lot more life so I'll just uh, enable these uh, foreground locusts by themselves here and as you can see here if we show the shot without the background locust and just the foreground locust everything is still pretty well integrated into the scene you can see that we haven't added a letterbox to this part of our scene here because the locusts are kind of overlapping with the black bars at the bottom of our scene here but that's no problem we've added a black solid on top here to deal with that but this is the shot without the background locusts finally I've added a black solid again to get rid of our locusts that are overlapping the uh, bottom of the frame here and then I've added an adjustment layer with some basic lumetry color which uh, has a little bit of a film look preset on it to give it a little more life and and uh, yeah, that is how you can use two different locust elements, one for foreground locust and one for background locust. Just duplicate them and place them all over your scene. Get creative. Make sure their timing is a little bit different from each other and you can get away with a lot and populate your scene in the compositor with quite a bit of control. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. I will be doing an apocalyptic visual effects series here in about a month or so where I show how you can add craters and do uh, dirty up your environments with graffiti and nature and composite different elements together. So stay tuned for that series and feel free to subscribe if it's something you're interested in. I'll see you next time.